Hey guys, in our last video um, we made this uh, sword and um, once I published the video, one of the requests that I received was to show um, what would be the process of taking the sword and running it through Substance Painter to create some PBR textures. So currently if you uh, watch the previous tutorial you'll see that this is simply a uh, color map that was applied onto the mesh, right? And one of the um, request was how do how do we make this to be maybe more uh, reflective or metallic and then maybe this has a different uh, setting for the roughness and maybe it's not as reflective so to do this what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this model and I'm gonna export this out into uh, as an FBX file and I'm just gonna overwrite the one that I have once you export your uh, file out of Maya as an FBX. Let's jump um, into Substance Painter. And in Substance Painter, this is the test uh, that I've done so far. And you can see that the blade is super reflective, but the handle um, is is not, right? It has a different setting of, or a uh, different setting for the roughness. So let's, uh, let's see how uh, can we do this really quick in Substance Painter. So to do this, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna start a new project and I'm going to start this, uh, I'm going to set my document resolution to 2K. And because we did the uh, UVs in Maya in our previous tutorial, I'm going to make sure that the uh, auto unwrap is not selected because the UVs are already done. And I'm just going to simply select the FBX file that we just exported out, out of Maya. So I'm going to go ahead and say open and say OK and I'm not gonna save this project. All right, so once you uh, import the FBX file, this is uh, what you should see, something very similar to this. Uh, the very first step that I would do in Substance Painter is definitely bake the model. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm gonna go to baking. I'm gonna set it to uh, 2K. And since we don't have a high poly version uh, for this sword, we're gonna just simply say, use low poly mesh as the high poly mesh. And the only uh, setting that I'm gonna change here in the anti-aliasing, I'm gonna switch it to uh, super sampling of 4X. I'm gonna say bake. All right, and then let's go ahead and do return to painting mode. So now we have uh, something like this, right? We have our baked maps, and obviously uh, the next step would be to bring our color map that we created in Photoshop, again, in the previous tutorial, uh, to be used here in Substance Painter. So to do this, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a new layer. So I'm gonna say add fill layer. And then I'm gonna do uh, file import, import resources, add resources. And I'm just gonna grab that sword texture 2k.jpg that uh, we created. And I'm gonna say open. All right, I'm gonna set my uh, undefined to texture and go ahead and say import. I'm then going to take this uh, texture and just simply drag it into the base color. And then we'll make sure that it's uh, showing up on our model, right? Just like we have in Maya. All right, so as our next step, let's go ahead and add some uh, different roughness settings. Maybe the blade should be a little more shiny than the handle and so on. So to do this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to... Uh, let's go ahead and pump up our metallic because this is uh, clearly made out of solid metal. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn it up all the way up. The other thing that I can do is I can control the roughness on this piece here. And for that, I'm gonna turn my um, roughness all the way down to some something like 0.12, I think is pretty good. And that's gonna give me a decent uh, reflection that uh, I could use as my metal settings. And another thing that I could do if I wanted to test to see how that's looking, we can jump, jump around and change the HDR uh, maybe to a different one and maybe preview our uh, roughness, right? So if I hold down uh, shift and right mouse button click and drag, you can see how the reflections are looking thus far in uh, Substance Painter, right? So how do we uh, make sure that this blade is super reflective but this handle is not right so if we take a look at our let's go ahead and jump into the 2d setting for a minute um as you remember in our previous tutorial we did separate the handle from the blade which means these are uh, two separate elements that are part of the same uv sheet right so all we need to do is let's go ahead and just simply 
apply a new uh, fill layer and I'm gonna hold on the old key and just simply click on roughness and let's go ahead and turn our roughness uh, a little bit higher so I'm gonna go uh, up to make it less shiny and I'm going to uh, let's go ahead and call this handle next we can just simply right click and say add black mask come to our polygon fill uh, tool grab this UV chunk fill and just simply click on the handle right and that's gonna create a mask just for the handle and this will allow us to have a different setting between a blade and the handle and maybe to see it better let's go ahead and just turn this all the way down so we can see the difference so, so there you go so you see that the blade is being super reflective again depending on your settings and your uh, different environment environment maps it's going to act and reflect uh, differently. All right, so let's uh, select this uh, this one here and you can really clearly see that there is a huge difference between the handle and the blade. If we wanted to add uh, something emissive, that's pretty easy to do um, here in Substance Painter. All we need to do is just add an emission uh, channel. So we can do that by simply uh, choosing emissive. And as soon as you select this in your channel, right, you can now uh, see that it also shows up in our material as an option, right? And that means if we, for example, add another fill layer, hold on the old key and just choose the emissive, we can uh, decide what color we want our uh, maybe shiny gem to be. So in this case, we can figure out if maybe it's blue, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and select maybe something like this. I'm going to, uh, let's go ahead and call this uh, gem. I'm gonna go ahead and apply a black mask and uh, simply, let's go ahead and simply take our brush and let's make it a little bit smaller and let's just clear out the part of the gem that we want to glow, right? So maybe something like that. And it obviously it's gonna be on both sides because um, the, our UVs are overlapping each other, right? If you remember. And then if you wanted to uh, turn this on uh, in Substance Painter and see what that actually looks like, you can always come to uh, these settings here and let's do a couple things here. So let's go ahead and activate post effects and let's go ahead and activate glare, right? And then another thing we can do, let's maybe turn this down a little bit. Let's do a uh, bloom. Very nice. Let's go ahead and jump into uh, this section here. And let's also turn up the emissive intensity. And you can see how our emission is kicking in and making the gem uh, kind of glow. So now we have three things going on, right? We got the uh, handle with one uh, roughness setting. We have the blade being super reflective. And then on top of that, we created an emission channel for our gems. And you can do one for this one as well. Right, so once you are happy with all this and you are ready to export this out, just simply go to File, Export Textures. Uh, let's go ahead and set this to uh, Background. I'm gonna do maybe 1K Textures. Let's go ahead and do JPEG. And I'm gonna leave this at PBR uh, Roughness. And if you wanted to preview and see which um, maps are being exported. You can see that here. So you have the color map, emission, metallic, roughness, everything we need, right? So let's go ahead and uh, jump back into global settings. Let's change the destination of our folder. In our case, I'm going to set it to my sword folder and just call it uh, textures. Go ahead and do open and do export. If I wanted to preview my textures, I can click on this button here and see what they are. So I have my color map, I have the, the emission. Uh, I, we don't really have any height information, but we do have uh, metallic and roughness, right? Very nice. So the uh, only other map that is not uh, currently uh, as part of the set is maybe something that you do uh, want is the ambient occlusion. So to get that, uh, it's very easy. Instead of a PBR metallic roughness, we can jump into something like mesh maps, go into phone settings, 
and let's go ahead and make sure that ambient occlusion is part of this list, which is it, which it is, it's the first one. So now I can just simply uncheck everything else and just pretty much steal the ambient occlusion right out of here. Actually, I believe this one is gonna be our ambient occlusion. Let's make sure, yes it is, very nice. So now we can do export. Let's go ahead and do open uh, output directory and make sure that our map is here and it is. And you can see there's not much going on in here. So maybe uh, we're kind of wasting our time, but that's how you can quickly uh, export ambient occlusion if you wanted to, right? Um, very nice, let's go ahead and do uh, save settings. And now since we have all of these um, PBR maps done, let's go ahead and jump back into Maya. And in here, again, uh, in our last tutorial, I'm just gonna say it one more time, we only have the color map and nothing else. So this time around, let's go ahead and apply these materials that we just created in Substance Painter uh, to the sword. So how do we do this really quick? Uh, the best way to do this is definitely just simply going into the Substance uh, tab and clicking on our um, Apply Workflow to Maps, then doing Select Maps, go to Texture, select all of these maps and just do Select and Maya will automa automatically assign these. Just go ahead and do Apply. Now, if you don't have the Substance uh, button here, you can go to Windows, Settings, and preferences and go to plugin manager and if you type in uh, substance in your uh, plugin manager you will see uh, them listed here and you just want to make sure that they're loaded and auto load is both turned on right to activate them and then to uh, assign the um, PBR texture material that we just created using that plugin is we just simply have to right click go to existing and it's gonna be the top one, AI standard surface. So I'm just gonna click on it. And now uh, the only other thing I need to do is let's go ahead and delete these lights again from our previous tutorial and activate our Ar Arnold lights. So I'm gonna do Sky Dome. And if we wanted to, we can also set our HDR image. So maybe something like that should be fine. And there you go, so you can see that our uh, PBR maps with the reflections are uh, working, right? Just fine. And then to activate the uh, emission, you just obviously get, gonna have to render this out because uh, Maya doesn't uh, support uh, glowing uh, in the viewport, at least at this time, right? So now if you uh, do a quick rendering, you will see what that looks like. Let's go ahead and do that real quick. Maybe let's do something kind of low. I'm gonna set this to 1K. And let's go ahead and just do a uh, render. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and press play. I'm gonna go into my sky dome. I'm gonna turn off camera because I don't wanna see that image in the back. And I'm going to uh, jump into my Arnold material. Let's go ahead and jump in here. Let's go into AI standard surface one That's what it's currently called if we wanted to we can rename this AI sword AI stands for Arnold, right? So we have the AI sword material and if we wanted to pump up the emission We can always go to our emission channel here and then instead of one Maybe let's make it a little more dramatic like 10 and you can see what that looks like right there It's starting to glow a little more and if you wanted to add some post effects, you go into uh, this button here, render settings, jump into Arnold, render, go to imagers, and let's go ahead and add something called that's called lens effects. And then uh, turn up the uh, strength for the bloom, right? So you wanna pump this up. And you can quickly see that it's uh, beautifully matching what we saw in Substance Painter as far as the uh, maps go, right? So that's pretty much the workflow or the step-by-step uh, -step process that you would have to do to create PBR texture maps for this asset. And everything that you're seeing here in Maya is gonna be uh, looking exactly the same way uh, in the game engine. So it's the same process with the same maps. And you just have to decide what resolution maps you want to export out. If you wanna keep them you know, 2K or 1K, uh, typically for an asset uh, this size, I would say, uh, I think, you know, 1K is uh, should be planning.
all right so thank you again for watching uh, this tutorial and again this ended up being sort of a part two of the previous one so I hope you uh, enjoyed this video and I'll see you in our next one